Hello again, this is Brad Bourne with the fifth report for World 3. I'm um, going to answer a few more questions again. Sorry if I'm answering anything twice, but well, I get the same question over and over again, so who knows. And uh, I have something pretty cool to show off. Uh, right now I'm just running in a slightly later version of this level. So let's see, first off, I still don't know when it's going to be released. There's no release date. Uh, no idea. It'll be out when it's done, is about it. Um, so I'm not announcing or doing any sort of private beta right now. Uh, if I do a beta before the whole thing's released, uh, you're going to know from my site. So if you want to keep up with uh, World 3, you know, check my site often. And if I have a, uh, a beta, you hear about it there. Uh, okay, so there's something new. You can uh, roll off ledges and you keep kind of rolling there. So there's, I think, like 12 different jumps in the game now. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, I keep getting lots of new ideas from everybody. Uh, it's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't need new bosses or a plot line or anything. That's, uh, you know, one of the first things I really made uh, while working on World 3. You know, it's kind of my game, my story to tell. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a lot more in-depth and involving story this time. Uh, I'm not looking for bosses or bad guy ideas. I really have a ton of sketches everywhere right now. Uh, so, you know, when I show those off... Uh, if I show this off before release, definitely I'll take feedback on it, which you guys think, but uh, I'm definitely not looking for new ideas. Uh, let's see. So, oh, uh, is there going to be any golf? Well, um, I don't think I'm going to do a golf hole for each level. I might do, um, like I said, I'm trying to make the bonus levels kind of stand out more uh, than they have in the past games. So I might have a few dedicated levels to an actual golf thing, or maybe... Uh, I don't know, maybe I will put a snail shell golf hole in every level. I haven't really decided on that yet. But there will probably be some sort of uh, you know fancy sports in this game uh, in some fashion. I'm definitely not uh, abandoning the snail shell. I just haven't put snails in any of these levels yet because I mean, they're mostly uh, you know just a bunch of outlines still. Um, and any bad guys I have in here I just kind of threw in for the fun of it. So... Uh, just not to that stage yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, so somebody asked if Fancy Pants Man is going to be too overpowered now with all the different uh, combat moves, you know. And uh, it's a pretty good question. I don't think that the pencil's really gun going to make fighting uh, spiders too much easier just because of how long it takes to beat up a spider with a pencil. Uh, I mean, it really is a lot easier to just step on them and kick them or do the heavy stomp where you keep holding jump or down. Uh, and defeating him right away. There's going to be bad guys like the pirate specifically for the pencil. And um, I don't know if you could really say he's more, uh, you know, powered or stronger than before because, uh, you know, there weren't any bad guys like that. Hopefully they won't be too easy. Uh, right now they're actually too hard already. So, uh,. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Mostly it's just going to be that there's uh, you know, a lot of new different moves, so there'll be a lot of different ways to play. Uh, if you don't, if you want to beat the game without using the pencil at all, you can certainly do that. One thing I wanted to do a lot more of with, with World 3 is uh, the cutscenes. So World 2 has one in the beginning and one at the end. Uh, well, not, no, okay, there's no cutscene at the end. There probably should be, but anyway. Uh, World 1 doesn't have any whatsoever. So I'm working on doing uh, a lot more like the first cutscene uh, in World 2, I want to make it a bit uh, more dynamic, but that leaves me with a lot more animating to do, and uh, that's something that's uh, I guess just really fun for me to do, so I kind of wanted to show off the different stages in me animating um, a really simple movement for Captain Rainbow Beard, so let me pull him up here. Um, Alright, so he's doing a really simple little uh, goofy uh, you know, like, I'm so awesome, shifting his belt buckle around, uh, uh, sort of movement, and, um, and so how I usually start animating, I focus on one little thing, so this is his belt buckle, is kind of doing, you know, after his hands hit it, his, his belt buckle's doing most of the action, and then, you know, the head's kind of reacting to that, and everything, you know, the coat's gonna move and all that, uh, so the head's just a placeholder, kind of get where he's centered at, and, um, and you see he's landing from somewhere. I'm not going to really say more about that. I probably should have cut that out, but whatever. 
Another one here, you can see everything is kind of in between. Uh, you can see the next part where his hands kind of let go, so I'm kind of timing where that's going to be. Um, still pretty much the same though. And so this is the third one I'm actually tracking where I, I kind of think I want his elbows to be. So I'm really bad at like straight ahead animation, so I can't just like look at the first thing and be like, alright, here's what the next frame's going to be. So I'm focusing on little bitty parts of it. And then, you know, once I actually watch the dots, I can tell, okay, this is pretty much where his elbows are going to be. You know, I can clean it up a bit more later. So, all right, so now we have a few more things I'm kind of adding to that. And it's basically the one center thing, the belt buckle, is kind of puppeting everything else. All right, so now we have the arms in there. You can see them. Uh, again, I'm trying to make, uh, you know, building off of that one... Uh, motion. I'm connecting the elbows, making the arms. Then, all right. So here is actually I kind of like how this looks. The uh, the coat is moving with all that. Uh, so once you got the belt moving, I can kind of tell where the hips are going to be, and then everything kind of sways back and forth. Um, and then from there, where'd this one go? Here we go. So I had to put a blue background because his head thing's white. Um, so you got all the detailing on the coat, which takes forever to do. <laughs> uh, the belt is a bit more solid now. The feet, you can kind of tell where they're going to go. And he, uh, you know, kind of does a awesome stance there. And then, so before I was just using the head clip. Now, uh, when I'm drawing that, I actually have that as an outline. So I see the head moving around only as an outline. And then I'm just drawing on top of that. I don't really like to tween too much stuff unless, uh, you know, I have to because it's programmed or there's some code in there or something. Uh, so then you can kind of see the nose is being offset a bit, so he's kind of tilting his head up and down. Uh, it's still a little messy because um, I have to go off of the outline, so I'm not just straight tracing that. Uh, and you can see I kind of adjusted the belly. So, you know, after kind of watching his head, I could tell, okay, I think his stomach should probably be moving more than the, than the cloth rippling over it, so he looks thicker. Uh, and then the last part here, I guess, is, is just the, uh, so just a few more details in the face. I'm kind of going, looking at where the nose is going, and then kind of trying to track the, the beard, like, right under the nose, so it's a certain distance from the nose. And, uh, and then I made the feet outline so you could see the coat through them. Uh, and then the back of the coat and a little more detailed things. Uh, so that's it. I mean, it's, it's a ton of work. It's not supposed to just be a dialogue between two characters or a plot line for me. You know, I want it to be, uh, you know, I want to take personalities and, and characters and really make them live. You know, kind of the ultimate art form, uh, getting something to, you know, really have its own personality. Uh, well, I guess you can bring that even further by making them a playable character, but, uh, you know, I can't do that for everybody. And that's it for the Fifth World 3 report. Once again, I'm Brad Bourne, and I'll see you next Friday. And everyone go play World 2 again. Or something. Or go watch YouTube videos. Other ones. Go look at cat pictures. Cat pictures are awesome. Unless you hate cats. Don't hate cats. Maybe you should just record Nora's making a noise and stuff like that. <laughs> That's the end of this report. Where is Norris? Go get him. Uh, Norris is outside. Sorry, guys. Tell Maya to bark. Hey, Maya. Maya, tell everyone goodbye. Maya, speak. Maya, speak. Nelly. Uh, sorry, guys. Maya, speak. 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 She's stretching. Maya, speak. <laughs>